So my name is Marc Andre Lanceau from Inbox International and Impress CMS. We're just out. I'm with Joey and Arun from Microsoft, and we're just out of a roundtable organized by you guys. And I just want you to share the outcomes of that uh, roundtable. So how it went. Well, the idea behind the roundtable was to have uh, just some kind of discussion uh, about, you know, what interests what what interested each of us individually, and uh, actually, more importantly, was to try and find some areas of common ground. And we had some interesting um, we uh, we had an interesting split because there were two people from uh, Microsoft participating in the roundtable. There was Christian Beauclair, who is a senior developer evangelist at Microsoft. Um, he is the long timer. He's been there for 16 years. Okay. Uh, you know, so I mean, he's he, he's been there since before the Windows 95 launch, okay. and you know, eats, sleeps, and breathes Microsoft all the time. And then on the other hand, there's me. I'm a relatively new hire, maybe only there 16 months. And prior to that, I mean, for the previous eight years or so years, I've been working in the open source world, with uh, PH, primarily PHP, some Python, and Ruby on Rails. So uh, you, you know, and then between uh, you know, and between us, you know, various people working uh, mostly on PHP applications in the open source world. So we just wanted to talk and exchange some ideas, and um, you know, see what uh, see what see what people think. Um, there have been a lot of accusations that Microsoft sometimes is a little too looks only within its own world and doesn't look outside. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to not only change that perception, but also you know, change change that reality yeah. as well. And actually go and look beyond our own world. It's interesting because like on that the conversation resulted in a lot of oh I, I didn't know that and it was kind of interesting because it's when you kind of have this conversation especially with like someone like Joey Devilla and Christian Beauclair um, it can help really help uh, the other developers sort of understand you know okay well there are a lot of very interesting things going on that not a lot of people know that Microsoft is necessarily doing. Like for example, someone in the roundtable said something like, um, "Well, people might change, might might switch from Windows to another software or another non-Microsoft software because it will get help, it will get support." But we were all probably surprised to know that we could probably get that kind of support at Microsoft, but we just don't know it via forums or you have places where developers can ask questions and can get help. But the, probably the open source community doesn't know that. No, and uh, you know what? That also always wasn't the case. Developer evangelism at Microsoft is a relatively new branch of the company. It, it, I mean, it didn't start until after 2000. Okay. And, of course, there are other things as well that are relatively new. The MVP program, which is where we actively reward people who go out and try to help the community, whether by blogging or actively helping people out. There are MVPs who are just basically people who know a lot about a specific Microsoft product. They're MVPs for various products, and they just go out and help the community. So there are, there are a C-sharp MVP is a programmer who would probably write a lot of articles, answer questions on forums, has maybe even written a book or two. Uh, on the subject. And there are MVPs for just about everything. So that mentality is still relatively new. Why do you think that change occurred inside Microsoft in the last few years? Well, I think part of it is the fact that, you know what, I mean, it's a fairly large company sooner or I mean, with about 90,000 people in there, you're going to have a lot of opinions of coming in from all over the place. Uh, one thing that uh, the open source guy at Microsoft, Garrett Serac, likes to point out is is that, you know, um, when Bill Gates was still actively running the company, you know, there were about 50,000 people at Microsoft, and now there are, you know, there's almost double that. So half the people in the company are actually more or less from the post-Gates era. So it's a, it, it, it's a different, uh, and, co and companies are basically the people who occupy them. So it is a different company because there are so, all, all sorts of different, different sorts of people. I mean, I... I have to admit, if you, would, if you went in a time machine and visited me 10 years ago and said, you will be working at Microsoft, I would, have I, would not, I would have laughed in your face. <laughs> but you know what? I absolutely love this job. And uh, I have a lot of fun. And the other thing is, actually, I still, get, I, I still spend a fair bit of time either talking about technologies, uh, certain technologies, and even programming languages from the open source world. We're talking about PHP running on Windows. And actually, you know, I get tapped a lot for, well, you used to develop for PHP. What do you, what do, you do? And same thing with, um, you know, the, the uh, .NET versions of Python and, you know, this Iron Python and Iron Ruby as well. 
So you you guys participate to a lot of these conference to 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 talk about Microsoft open source. Well, um, this is actually the first time that we've uh, sponsored Confu. I mean, well, it's kind of the first time. It's the first time. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, this is the first time sponsoring uh, Confu. And um, we actually had our first sort of cross-platform conference last year, which was called Make Web Not War, and it was in Toronto. And it was actually talking about open source development that can be done on uh, you know the Windows and IIS. So um, we're actually having that conference in uh, Montreal this year. It's going to be on May 27th, and uh, again, the focus is going to be on uh, different types of open source applications that can be deployable on you know something like Windows Azure or even like uh, with Silverlight integration. So um, it's about you know sponsoring these conferences is to let them know you know we're. We're here, and we're, we want to support different open source communities. But we're also having our our own conferences to help, um, I guess, uh, get the word out on kind of the stuff that's uh, going on within the Montreal community and uh, within Microsoft. And what is the general perception of people when you go into these kind of conference? Because usually you have like the open source world, and you have the Microsoft world, and so how do you how do those how do those guys perceive you or see you? I think uh, that, that's an interesting question. Like at, at first, it's with a, a bit of hesitation. Yes, there's a, there's always something. <laughs> and you know what? I don't blame them. <laughs> yeah, which makes sense. But it's it's funny because like once they can actually have a they they once they have a conversation and they kind of have a, an understanding of you know you know what our jobs sort of entail, they start to see okay, there there's a, a very different attitude that the company's taking towards open source versus maybe any. Conceptions that they used to have, misconceptions that they may have had in the past. Yeah. Um, in the end, actually, I've noticed, and one of the reasons I actually joined the company a year and a half ago was I saw certain changes in attitude. And uh, one thing that uh, one thing that made me happy was that uh, there's this philosophy now that you know what we we do, um, Microsoft does not compete with software movements. They compete with other companies, and that's a difference entirely. So nowadays. Within Microsoft, I mean, there is an open source lab in right on the Microsoft headquarters, and it's full of stuffed tux penguins that have not been harmed in any way. And uh, the general feeling is that open source is now more of an opportunity than a threat, up to the point where we actually managed to convince our lawyers to let us draft up the MSPL, Ooh. the Microsoft Permissive License. It is a nice, short, open license. It's very much in the style of BSD or MIT license. It is so short, it's shorter than the GPL preamble. I'm going to be showing a slide showing the difference between the sizes of the two licenses. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. So we're going to wrap it up now. So thank you very much Thanks, for coming here. And we'll thank you for having us. Have a nice conference. Thanks. I think we will. Thanks. Thank you.